Hey guys, so let's check out this classic example of conservation of angular momentum, okay? Remember, conservation of angular momentum are about objects that are spinning that will change either their m and then that will cause a change in omega or they will change the radius of some sort and that will cause a change in omega. Those are the two types that you have to look out for. So here we have an ice skater that has a moment of inertia of six. So I equals six when she spins with her arms open. So her I is six when she spins with arms well open. And four if she closes her arm. I close equals four. It says here if she spins with six, uh, with 120 um, RPM with her arms open. So RPM open is 120. What RPM will she have as a result of closing her arms? What will be RPM close? Okay, so you can think of open as initial because that's where we start. And you can think of close as final. Okay, so we're going to use the conservation of angular momentum equation, which is Li equals Lf. In this case, we have one person. So it's just going to be, this is going to be just I omega for one person. I initial, omega initial equals I final, omega final. Okay, the I's are given. Um, the I's are given. So this is going to be initial is 6, and then I have omega. I'm going to make a little space here. And then this is 4, and then I'm going to make a little space here. Now, notice that this is omega, and this is omega, but I gave you one RPM, and I asked you for another RPM. So this whole question is in terms of RPM, but the equation is in terms of omega, like usual. All of our equations are in terms of omega. We always have to convert RPM into omega. But what I want to show you is that you can actually think of, you can actually rewrite this equation here in terms of RPM. So let's do that real quick. Remember, um, omega is 2 pi f, or 2 pi over t, or 2 pi, I'm going to plug in f here, and it's going to be rpm over 60. So what I want to do real quick is I want to show you that there are three variations of this question. Okay, so let's do that real quick. So this is like the, the official legit version number one. Here's version number two. Instead of omega, I'm going to write 2 pi f, and look what happens. I initial, 2 pi frequency initial equals I final, 2 pi frequency final. Notice that the 2 pi's cancel, and you end up with I f equals I f. Okay, so this is another version of this equation. You can just basically replace omega by frequency, okay? And they are both on the top. If you do this with period, this is what you get. I, this is version two. I, two pi period initial equals I final, um, two pi period final, okay? These guys will cancel and you end up with I initial period initial equals I final period final. And you can do the same thing for RPM. Okay, and this is the last one. That's the one we're going to use here. You, we can say I initial. Now, instead of um, instead of 2 pi f, we're going to use 2 pi RPM over 60. So 2 pi RPM over 60 equals I final. Let me try to squeeze this in here. Get out of the way. Um, 2 pi RPM over 60 okay that almost didn't fit and look what i can do here i can cancel the two pies in the rp in the 60 and you're left with i initial rpm initial equals i final um, rpm final okay so this is the conservation equation but you can think of it in these three alternative versions as well. This just makes it really easy for you to solve these questions uh, by basically briefly rewriting the equation. So one point that I want to make here is that a way to know how to make these, these exchanges very quickly is look at omega. Omega is on the top. It's on the denominator 
um, up here, numerator up here. F is on the numerator up here. They're both up top. That's why they both show up up top here. T is on the denominator. That's why T shows up at the bottom when you replace it. And RPM is at the top. That's why RPM shows up at the top here. Okay. So in this question, we're actually, we don't have to convert the RPMs into omega and then back into um, RPM. We can just actually plug in the RPM. So I'm going to plug in RPM initial, RPM final. Okay. It would have been quick to just replace stuff, but I wanted to show you that we can do this. So RPM initial is, RPM initial is open, which is 120. And then this is 4 RPM final. So RPM final will be 6 times 120 divided by 4. Okay. And the answer here is 180 RPM. Now, the last point I want to make, so this is the final answer. Boom. The last point I want to make is notice that our I went from 6 to 4. It is it changed by a factor of 1.5. It went down by a factor of 1.5. And then, so it went down by 1.5. Um, and then the RPM went from 120 to 180. It went up by a factor of 1.5. And that's because conservation momentum here of angular momentum is a linear relationship. There's no squares or whatever. Um, so if one goes down by, by 1.5, the other one has to go up by 1.5. Okay. All right. So that's it for this one. This question is actually really easy. Uh, I just took a little longer because I wanted to, to, to do a little bit of analysis and I wanted to introduce you to these three alternative versions of the conservation equation so you can solve some of these questions faster. All right. So that's it for this one. Let me know if you need any help, if, uh, if you have any questions and let's keep going.